our last question for you is obviously we mentioned that Polyphony Lit is sort of a magazine where it's teen writers but also teen editors. So you have sort of this young platform of writers supporting each other, offering feedback, sending work. So we were wondering, you know, this is sort of a simple question, but do you have any advice for both young writers and young editors today? Sure. I, I always think I have no advice, and then 20 minutes later I'm still talking, so I'm just going to admit <laughs> I do have advice. Um, well, I, I guess my advice really is more for writers, although in a certain way every writer is also an editor. I mean, I, so I guess that leads to one of my pieces of advice, which is, at least for me, writing is rewriting. I mean, that's really where it all happens. I, my method, and it's different for everyone, but I kind of spew out a messy first draft that's very intuitive and kind of improvisational, and then I work like crazy to, to shape it and, and sort of make it fulfill whatever vision it seems like it's leaning toward. Um, so, uh, so revision is a big thing, but to back up and be a little more basic, one thing I find sometimes in, in writing workshops that I teach is that I feel like people are, they want to write fiction, let's say, but, but all they talk about is television. So I think the first thing I would say is read in the genre you want to write in. If you're trying to write literary fiction, you got to read it. <laughs> We're, it, writing is a conversation. We're all, these books are all in communication with each other and stories. And what I often say if, to people, if, if what they really want to do is watch serialized TV, that's great. Start thinking about writing for TV because you're not going to have the tools to contribute meaningfully to a conversation with books you're not reading. So recognize what you want to do. If you want to sort of ease into a different kind of reading, use discipline to do that. So read in the genre you want to write in. I would also say the willingness to write badly has been very important for me because my method, as I said, is very intuitive, but you can't rely on your unconscious. You can't expect to sort of blindly produce great work. So be willing to write badly. And again, that gets back to the revision point. A bad first draft, I had I, The Keep, the gothic thriller, mm -hmm. my working title was a short, bad novel. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought, I can't disappoint if that's all I'm trying to do. And in fact, I did not surpass that goal. All I wrote in my first draft was a short, bad novel. It was short and it was bad. But it was a start. You know, it's so much easier to work with something than with nothing. And I really think writer's block is so much about that fear of, of nothing. And I also think another really important thing is, that, is to try to find and honor your own method. Everyone has a different way into fiction. You know, auto fiction is very big right now. People find their own lives a source of inspiration. If that's what fiction writing was, I would now be a doctor because I hate writing about myself, I hate writing about people I know, and I do it very badly. For me, inspiration comes from time and place. I start with a kind of a sense of atmosphere, and, I, and that comes before characters or a story. And that's true whether I'm writing a short story or a whole novel. So, you know, if, if I, I were expecting to find inspiration from my own life, I wouldn't be finding inspiration. I've had to learn what sort of what is my portal into an alternate universe and and work around that so i think finding your own source of inspiration and honoring that is a big part of the challenge awesome yeah good luck <laughs> to all of us yeah. because it never ends <laughs> thank you so much thank you it's a pleasure thank you so much